Okay, so this is an uh, introduction to standard costing. Okay, so what we have here is a regional budget. So that's an OB. So the regional budget stands for, uh, OB stands for regional budget. That was for a thousand units. Then on the right hand side, we have the actual figures, so the actual costs. And that's for 1,100 units. Then we have the different cost elements. So there's materials, labor, variable overheads, and fixed overheads. You can see the corresponding costs there. So in total, we budgeted for 100,000 rand costs for 1,000 units. And the actual results were 102,495 for 1,100 units. Now the question is, why did we go over budget? Or did we go over budget? So can we compare this original budget for 1,000 units with the actual figures, the actual costs for 1,100 units? So if you look at this timeline, when did we budget for the 1,000 units? At the start of the year. Obviously we didn't know exactly how many units we were going to produce, but we had a plan. Then at the end of the year, you see the actual units are 1,100. So back to the budget versus actual. Obviously, we can't compare costs for a thousand units to cost for one thousand one hundred units. If we produce ten percent more units, we'd expect ten percent more variable costs. The fixed cost should stay the same. So for that reason, we have to flex the original budget. We have to prepare a new budget at the end of the year for one thousand one hundred units actually produced. That's the actual units produced. Or AUP. So here we have a new budget prepared at the end of the year for the actual units produced of 1100 and you can see we basically flex the original budget for the new amount of units. So you can also see this flexible budget or FB as the should have been column or how much should it have cost us to make 1100 units. That we can compare with the actual cost for 1,100 units. So how do we get to the flexible budget value? Well, if it costs 10,000 rand for material for 1,000 units, that would be 10 rand per unit. 10 rand per unit multiplied by 1,100 units is 11,000. And it's the same for labor and variable overheads. So they're all variable costs. So we just flex or gross them upwards to get to a cost that is 10% higher because we produce 10% more units. For now, forget about this flexing of the fixed overheads. Because remember, the fixed cost should not change if we produce more or less units than what we budgeted for. So forget about the fixed cost, we're just going to look at the variable cost for now. So now I've eliminated the original budget because that's rather useless. We can't compare a thousand units with one thousand one hundred units. So everything on this table that you see is for the actual units produced of one thousand one hundred units. That's vitally important. You can never compare the costs for an original budgeted amount of units to actual units that's different from that original unit. Now we can say, okay. Material cost us, should cost us, remember flexible budget is how much should it have cost us, if we had known how much we're going to produce. So material should have cost us 11,000 rand, but it did cost us 11,495. So we overspent, that's clear. Labor should have cost us 22,000, and it did cost us 22. So it looks like that's okay. Variable overage should have cost us 33,000 to produce 1,100 units. And it did cost us only 30,000. So that's less than what it should have cost us. Forget about the fixed cost for now. So back to material. What could possibly have been the reasons for the overspending of 495 rand? Think of possible reasons in real life. So yes, we could have paid more than what we should have paid per kilogram of raw materials when we purchased it. That's in the purchasing department. Or, we could have used more kilograms in production than what we should have used. That's in the factory. So, they wasted some of the materials. Either it was stolen, it evaporated, uh, it got broken, 
or they were just inefficient um, or they had to redo a job. So there's lots of different reasons. We want to see where did the variance occur. Was it due to the usage or was it due to the price? So the problem is, let's go two slides back. The problem is the difference between this column and this column here. There's two differences. The quantity difference, so actual quantity versus standard quantity, or how much should have been used, and then actual price per kilogram versus standard price per kilogram. So how do we isolate the price difference and the quantity difference? So there's the three components that make up the cost. So units times the quantity times the price, or the units times the quantity and times the price. So if we want to isolate this, the quantity, we have to set the price at the same level. So we, everything is at actual units. Remember, the whole table is for 1,100 units. But let's make the middle column at standard price, but the actual quantity. So you can see there, we isolate the difference in quantity that we should have used per unit versus quantity that we did use per unit. That's a quantity theory. And the price here inside, we keep, well, obviously the actual units produced are the same, 1,100 units. And the actual quantity we set at the same level, only the price is different. Standard price versus actual price. That gives us price variance. So basically, we had to add a new column in the middle, which we can call, if you want, actual quantity of input at standard price. So the actual quantity of input comes from the actual side every time. That means the actual and the actual quantity are the same, so no quantity difference on this side. Only a price difference, standard price versus actual price. Whoops. And then on the quantity side, we have should have quantity versus actual quantity of input. Both at the standard price. So there's no difference in the price. It's both at standard. But it's the how much should I have used quantity versus the how much did I use quantity. And then it's simply a matter of recording the difference or calculating the difference. So I should have used material that cost me 11,000 Rand. I did use material that should have cost me 12,100 at the standard price. So this difference here of 1,100 Rand unfavorable, U stands for unfavorable, is as a result of using more kilograms at the standard price than what we should have used. So you can test it using the standard cost formula. So that formula says standard quantity. So standard quantity would be 1,100 units times 1 kilogram, so 1,100 kilograms, versus actual quantity of 1,210 kilograms. So that's 110 kilograms difference. We used more than what we should have used, so it's an unfavorable variance of 110 kilograms, not units, kilograms, multiplied by the standard price of 10, so that's the quantity variance of 1,100, unfavorable. On the price variance side, you see the actual quantity of input and the actual quantity of input, which were given in this case, is the same. It's only the price that we paid that is different. So it's 10 grand per kilogram versus on this side, if you calculate it, it's 950 per kilogram. So we've saved 50 cents per kilogram used times the number of kilograms used, which gives us 605 Rand, and it's a favorable variance because we use less or purchased less than what we should have purchased at the standard price.